Maury Dunbar here back at Painted Studio. Thanks for coming in on a Wednesday afternoon. We're going to do something I haven't done in a while, so hopefully I don't make a mess of it while I'm doing it. Um, we're going to water gild, uh, not water gild, uh, gild with water-based uh, adhesive, and then we're going to use Temise flakes and then seal the whole thing up. So give me just a second to go on my page, make sure I am live, make sure I've turned the volume down so I don't hear myself on echo, and let's do this. Okay, and give me a second, there we go, and we've done a followers notification, so that should make sure everybody knows we're online. I know most people hate getting that notification. Unfortunately, we, it is our only way that we can now notify people that we're going live since I'm never quite sure what my schedule is and it always kind of gets mixed up doing this. So today we're going to gild on a piece of Baltic birch. Now we carry these boards. They're one foot by one foot and one eighth inch thick and I use them for furniture samples and for testing product out. Um, we have painted this with two coats of set coat black because we're going to be using um, our Roberson's water-based size for gold leaf, which is not exactly great over our uh, gesso product. It's great for when I'm doing stamped gilding or punch gilding, but it is, in general, dries a little softer on the uh, on other uh, aspects. So right now, for what we're doing, we're going to use this. We're going to use an old Modelo that I have, and we're going to use our Roberson's water-based gold leaf size. So I'm going to flip the camera down and adjust it so we're square. And I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to take a burnisher and I'm going to do this. You should do this with every single um, vinyl stencil, one time use stencils. If you have a Cricut, I'm sure you cut these yourself. Um, these are just a lot of old extras that I happen to have sitting around from various classes that I've taught over the years. And I'm trying to use them before they become absolutely unusable. Uh, that can't happen over time because of uh, the joys of um, adhesive and what happens with adhesive over long periods of time. It gets a little gummy, sticky, and then it doesn't want to work very well or it doesn't want to let go. So I pulled my entire backing sheet. When you order from Modelo, um, it says remove backing paper first on the back of these. So that's always helpful. Um, throw that, the backing paper to the side because it makes great packing material. And now I'm going to take my Modelo and try to center it. Um, I can kind of lightly set it down. It's not going to stick until I burnish it, so I just want to get it on as square as possible. If this was really important to be squared, um, I would have taken out a ruler, measured, and made sure I put it on 100% square. It's not. This is testing and playing, so I don't have to do that. So first of all, the thing I'm doing is burnishing it all to the surface. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a scissor and I'm going to cut these little bits off. Why? Because they mess with the way it lays on here when you try to take the backing paper off. It will pull on it, and I don't like that. It makes my Modelo pull up and I don't want that. So if you have anything that goes over the edges, do yourself a favor, trim it down. All right, once again, I'm gonna burnish it to make sure it's well adhered to the surface. And then I'm gonna turn it this way because I've got a clear edge to start rolling back. I'm gonna take my little scissor. I use either a picker or a little scissor or something like that to help me get my modellos started because the backing paper and sometimes the adhesive vinyl wants to come up when you pull the paper up. So you got to kind of work it a little bit. And that's what I'm going to have to do right now, clearly, is finesse it a little bit because it does not want to let go of the backing paper. 
Come on. There we go. We'll get something going. Uh, sort of. Alright, come on. Why be such a little stinker to start? It's always hard to get this started. I always seem to want to just stay. And then once you get it going, it's usually pretty easy. spot that's started. Oh, this really is wanting to find. This is what I'm talking about. Old things, old adhesive. They don't want to let go. Let's get at least get it going. There we go. All right, now it's started. So the next thing I usually do is cut and tear the paper in pieces. Why? Because it's a little less tension and it tends to release a little better if I do it this way. And if you notice, I'm not pulling straight up like this because that can pull the vinyl and stretch it or tear it. I don't want that to happen. So I am just rolling it back, and then when I come on a piece that's sort of wanting to come up, I can just gently reapply it to the surface. All right, let's come over here. Let's go down this way. And I hold on to the vinyl as well because that helps keep it adhered. Now this sticks just fine, but when I'm putting tension on it, I can cause it to, to pull up in places. Let's, and there we go, there's the first piece off. So now we're gonna start this one. Okay, let's, let's see, let's give this a little tear the little scissors that's easier All right, come on. and this is um, low tack uh, sign vinyl so if you have uh, a vinyl you know like a printer who cuts vinyl and you can you can use unlicensed images to create these if you don't have a Cricut um, they'll do a lot of stuff I mean this is how stores this is the same method that stores use when they mount lettering on the inside of their glass with vinyl lettering and stuff it's very very common if you're not familiar with what this is but this is the low tack so that it's an easier release because some of that stuff you put on and it's like iron so if you have go to your sign guys and have them do something like this for you tell them you need the low tack vinyl the lowest tack that they have because otherwise you could if you can get it up you can rip the paint off of the surface now, don't do any of these on fresh paint. Let the paint set up for at least 24 to 48 hours before you apply these, because otherwise, um, again, you could rip it right off the surface. You want it to have enough time to be stable. kind of stencils for years and years and years so um, I kind of know the ins and outs and I've used them 
on much, much, much larger surfaces. Um, so you can get these made in all kinds of stein sizes. And then you can go to Modelo.com, um, which is a part of Royal Design Studio, who does amazing stencils, and get them there as well, which is where this one specifically came from. All right, let me make sure I'm going to take my burnisher, go down, give everything a little rub down, make sure all of my stencil is adhered properly because I don't want anything to seep under. And I'm, today I am going to use a sponge brush. Let me get the extra water out of it because I've already done one of these so we can move forward. Let me get that drop of water off there. So we're going to use our Roberson's um, acrylic gold leaf size. And you don't need a lot because this is thin. And I'm pouring it out on a plate because the sponge brush is easier to use. Now you can use a regular brush. You don't have to use a sponge brush, but just for the purpose of what I'm doing today, the sponge brush is the easiest applicator. So I'm brushing this on and it's a little watery because I've got some water in my brush but this will work just fine. And you want a smooth, even coat. Um, generally, I don't put it on this thick, but it's the water, not the adhesive that's thick, or that's um, adding bulk here. So I'm gonna just brush this on, and hopefully this will come to the right tack level because I'm banging around with this with a damp brush. Normally I don't do that, but if it's not tacky enough, I'll put a second coat of adhesive on here. All right. So I'm gonna, then we set this to, aside to dry and it is ready to use in about 20 minutes, but it will stay tacky like this um, for several days, if not several weeks. Now this is not strong enough to use with foils, so don't use it for foils. Only use it for gold leaf. We're going to set that down on the drying spot over there. We're going to pull our already prepped one off over here. So the next thing I'm going to do, now you, there's two ways of doing this. We could use, uh, apply the, the leaf product with this still on here, however, um, I want cleaner edges, so I'm going to pull off my stencil. Um, and by cleaner edges, I want the flakes to break. And then we'll discuss what tamise is as soon as I un, uh, remove my stencil. Now the other one. If I don't like how this one comes out, I might leave the stencil on and see if I like how that looks better. If I'm lucky, it'll look the same both ways. Okay, there's that. It's all gonna stick to my fingers. And again, a little, little pointy thing is very useful. Either a little scissor, a little pointy tweezer, or, um, a little picker tool. That. Usually I have a tweezer, but today I just happen to have these little scissors right next to me, so I'm using them. Oh, gosh, I'm getting stuff on here because there's a little pigment on my table from something else I was doing. That's not, that's not what I wanted to have on there. Oh well, it'll be fine. Again, these are test boards. I'm working on a couple other projects off to the side here to get them ready for a live later this week, uh, just to make sure that well, what used to work with one thing works with something else that now that the other thing isn't available. I hate it when products that I use all the time get discontinued and then I have to figure out a whole new way of doing stuff. Now the 
Now, one thing you do not want to do is stick your fingers into the adhesive um, because you can actually leave fingerprints in this and that can mar your surface. It won't be so much of an issue on this and the way we're gonna treat this, but um, in general, you don't wanna stick your fingers in the adhesive. You don't need fingerprints unless that's something you want. So if you notice, I'm letting the pointy end of stuff pick, pick it up and then I'm catching it with my finger once it's up off the surface so that I don't accidentally stick my fingers in the adhesive. And I'm only touching the board either on the, adhes on the vinyl itself or on the places that is just plain paint, no adhesive. All right, so we now have our pattern completely released out of the stencil. So I'm gonna show it to you. You can see the difference in the sheen. And now we're gonna use a product called Tamise. So Tamise flakes, um, these are actually with variegated leaves, so you can see there's multiple colors in here. They're basically little shredded pieces of leaf. And instead of having to apply the leaf in a grid pattern, you take it, open the container, and I'm gonna try to do this without making a huge mess because I always make a huge mess when I do this. Get in here on the sides. This is this is actually kind of fun to work with. It's almost like um, like you're filling in stuff, and you take it and you just sprinkle it on. And you're gonna sprinkle it over the entire surface. And it looks like you're putting tons and tons of product down, but you have to realize that this stuff will cover a lot of a lot of area. So you take it and you sprinkle it and you pat it down, and then whatever's left, you just put right back in your container. So I'm taking it and I'm tamping it down. I can do this with fingers. I can do this with a brush. I can do it with whatever tools I have on my hand, on hand. And I'm very generous with the way I'm handling this. Because I want to get as solid coverage as I can make it happen. side here and apply it and this is this happens to be one of my I love these things I haven't used it in a while I did a whole children's chair out of this at one point it's, it was so pretty so let's <coughs> turn, if you have to cough like I just did turn your head way away because otherwise you'll have a cloud of this stuff floating around and you see as I breathe and laugh it moves so be aware that happens you definitely don't want to be in an area where there's a lot of breeze or anything else and then just keep moving the product around and patting it to the open adhesive I know it looks like the pattern's disappearing, but it won't by the end of this. And I'm hoping to bring this into the studio so that um, you all can give this a try. just checking my sources right now. 
but I think this is just so much fun and it's so pretty. And then I'm going to show you how we seal this. Okay, and a little more here. So it looks like I used up a ton, but you, if you look in here, there's actually, I, I barely used a quarter of the box, um, which is probably substantially, it probably, it is substantially more leaf than would normally be applied if I was doing it by the square, but A, you're, you're going for the effect that these flakes give, and B, these are shreds, and we're going to start working them off the patterns now. So you can see I've got this all applied. I'm tamping it down with my hands. You can wear gloves or not wear gloves. Um, it doesn't matter at this point because now the, the adhesive is completely covered. I'm just checking to make sure I haven't left any adhesive exposed. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with something like a Taclon brush and start brushing the extras, excess off of here. Normally I wouldn't use a brush this stiff, but for Temise, because it's in little curled up bits, I need something a little bit stiffer than a regular skewings brush. I need something that will actually sort of scrape some of this back off. Now you can start to see right in this corner how beautiful this gets. All this that's coming off, I will put back in the box. Uh, so you can sweep it back up, try to keep it on the one piece of paper, but because of the way I move around, um, <laughs> that does that it wants to travel a little bit. All right, so now we're going to start breaking it in here. And now we can see our pattern start to emerge. And see that little stiff brush gets into where things kind of want to bridge over and I don't, and, and it kind of hides some of the pattern. Look how beautiful this is starting to look. Oh, so we're gonna come in here again take the brush, kind of go against it. It will scrape it out of the places with no adhesive, but it will not unadhere the flakes from the surface. Because basically, now they're pretty much as close to welded down as they could possibly be. And I'm just going to take this a little bit and dump some of this off. And again, all of this extra stuff goes right back into the box for me to use for another project. None of it gets wasted. Oops, except when I blow it in a cloud because I'm a dork. Okay, so I'm coming in. I'm skewings off. Okay, I'm going to come in here again, running the brush against it so that I can. And when I say against it, instead of brushing like this, to get it off, I'm taking the bristles and kind of scrubbing it up through it to break it out of the places because there was no foil, uh, leaf adhesive in here and I don't want it to stay that way. I want it to stay clear like I am uh, planned for it to be. I don't need any little bridges in my nice clean seams. Look how beautiful this is once this is now started to be removed. It makes such a gorgeous surface. Now Jennifer at Artistic Painting Studio had one that had the most gorgeous pinks and purples in it. Unfortunately, the company that made them has gone out of business and I bought her out of all the last she had years ago and I have never found it since. Otherwise, I'd be carrying it. Let's get 
some of this back over here. Oh, my table is going to need a lot of cleaning after doing this. Okay. Let's come over here. We're just literally breaking off the leaf that is not adhered to the adhesive. Now the reason you use so much is that you could start in small places, but then you start getting where it's thinned out, and then your fingers or your tool, whatever it is you're working with, will end up into the adhesive, and that changes the adhesive properties and mars the surface, and you won't get as good a result. So I'd rather dump more and then scrub it off and get a great final result than be frugal with the product when I first start it and have a really disappointing result from it. And as you can see, about 50% of what I put on is going to be coming off. against the grain with the brush, the more of the excess I can get off, and the better this looks. Okay, we're going to set that aside for a second, and I'm going to get... <laughs> do my best to get some of this back into the box because I'm going to make a mess doing this though, I know. So the first thing I'm doing is taking my paper, well, any of these little flakes that are big enough for me to grab, I'll pick up and put on the sheet of paper. But there's not going to be a lot because otherwise it just sticks to my fingers. So I'm going to take this and there's gold leaf size on this paper so it's going to stick to that too but then i'll take my paper and i do this yeah that's not working because it's sliding there we go and i just put a ton right back into that box and let's see if i can get a little more the only, I have to clean this up a little bit before we do the next step, just because otherwise it will be a total disaster here. All right, come on. Back into the container. All right, that's about as good as it's going to get for now, and I'll clean up the rest later. And as you can see, I still have the majority of the box, more than the majority. I have used far less than you'd think. So let's move that over to the side. Let's see if I can clean a little bit of this just out of my way for the moment. Now, the next thing to do, we've done our preliminary cleaning. We're going to come in with a soft cloth and buff. Make sure I've got the soft spot. I've used this as a paint rag too. And what this does is it smooths out any little extra bits. And you can see right around here, that there is like a finer dust that's coming off. It is the, what I didn't get off with the brush is coming off with this. And look how beautiful this is. I'm just so thrilled that this came out so well. And you can see the ring of stuff around here. That is fine, fine, like grinding the leaf. it off all the edges and everything. I'm really going in here and burnishing off any extra stuff that doesn't need to be on here because that will create a texture that I don't want. I want this smooth. 
Plus, I don't want the dust of it floating around and creating a mess. All right. So there is that. And again, that's not going to go back in the box. That is just dust, dust, dust. And I cleaned all of that off. Good thing I buy the paper by the case. Ugh. And the next thing we're going to do is apply Whitson's Universal Lacquer for Leaf. Now this is a, one of the really special properties of this is that it will not change the color of variegated leaf like this. Most every other top coat I have ever tried changes the color of variegated leaf because the variegated leaf has a lot of coppers and other things. Now this is um, composition gold, which is made up of brass and other things. And to get these colors, they use chemicals and heat treatments. Our Whitson's Universal Lacquer for Leaf keeps these blues, blues, keeps the greens, greens. And that is something that's really special. Now, normally we would do something like a degreasing, but with Tamise, I don't think I need to. Now I'm going to find out because if we did, did a degreasing, we would take, um, I'd let this set up for a day or so, and I would then come in with uh, a little dab of Dawn dishwash, the blue Dawn dishwashing liquid on a very wet rag, come in, and all that would do is remove any of the tooling grease. However, Tamise might not need it when it's like this. Um, I'll know if this breaks apart because all leaf has oil on it from the manufacturing and from the papers and stuff that it sits in. Um, but this might not need it. And look, see, we're still keeping those beautiful colors in here. Um, the only thing that this does really and truly change and alter is pink leaf. Um, pink leaf is usually a result of copper and copper is very temperamental so if you oxidize it or do chemical treatments to it the pinks want to disappear other colors are more stable so if you're using pink tamise or pink um, variegated leaf you're just gonna have to let it be and hope that it doesn't patina because anything sealing it will change the color. I have tried water-based, I've tried oil-based, I've tried alcohol-based, all of it shifts the pinks. But look at how beautiful that is. Now I have done entire pieces of furniture like this. Like I said, I did a children's chair in some a couple years ago, but I love the fact that now I have a top coat that, guarantee, that I can have and not have this alter all these beautiful colors in here. Um, once this dries, it will come back to a little brighter shine because right now you can see it's a little dulled compared to what's in the box. Um, and that's simply because there's a top coat on here that's wet. Once it dries, we're good to go. And I am just, just in love with this. I am so happy to have this stuff here and it does such a beautiful job. All right, let's flip this back up. So if you have any questions about any of the products I've used and why I use them, if I didn't make it clear, which can happen because I'm, I'm creating at the same time, I'm talking to you and that can make things confusing. But this is worth the effort. And if, I, if you need clarification, don't hesitate to leave a post here or send me a message and I will do everything I can. So we went from a box of Tommy Safe Flakes like this and a, and a sticker basically to this beautiful surface. And once it's dry, oh my God, it's going to be so beautiful. All right, everybody. Thank you for coming in today. I really appreciate you being here. Uh, we will be back again tomorrow with another project. We're going to be doing some more Christmas stuff. I'm testing some interesting ideas right now, so I hope you'll be back and see what we've got going on. All right, everybody. Have a good one.